Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dr. Andrew Kim, MD. I'm a board certified psychiatrist, and today we are gonna be talking about the use of omega-3 fatty acids for the treatment of clinical depression, specifically major depressive disorder. Now, first of all, this is a educational video. This is not me being your personal physician. Please consult with your own prescriber physician for direct medical advice. So I recorded this video already. I don't know why it was taken down for some kind of YouTube terms and conditions violation. So we're trying one more time, but it'll let me summarize it a little bit briefer than last time. So omega-3 fatty acids, this is not a novel concept, but the questions that we're gonna answer today are, um, is there legitimate evidence from decent research to support its use in clinical depression? If so, um, what are the theories of how it works? What specific subtypes of omega-3 fatty acids seem to give you the best probability of success? What are the doses? What are the side effects? And do I need to buy super expensive versions? Those are the topics we're gonna to cover today. So topic number one, uh, omega-3 fatty acids. There are uh, various subtypes of these omega-3 fatty acids. The main ones that are most well known are things like EPA, DHA, and ALA. EPA and DHA are typically found primarily in seafoods, things like fatty fishes like uh, salmon, tuna, mackerel. There are obviously other sources, but fatty fishes are, are usually where we're most akin to associating omega-3s. ALA is primarily plant-based omega-3 fatty acid found in sources like flaxseed, chia seeds, walnuts. But today, we're gonna be primarily talking about EPA and DHA-based interventions because that's what most of the clinical research studies that I'm about to quote we're focused on. So question number one, is there enough evidence to even support this or is this a really far off the beaten path kind of idea? No, over the past decade, there have been close to almost 50 randomized controlled studies that have shown modest benefit with very low risk of side effect uh, that I still feel like this is a very underutilized and underappreciated intervention. That amount of foundational research is actually probably greater than some of the uh, research backing for some recent medications that have been FDA approved as prescription antidepressants by the FDA recently. And that's a pretty sad commentary, in my opinion. There were recent meta-analyses that have been done as recently as two years ago that again support that uh, this aggregate of all these different randomized controlled trials seems to demonstrate modest evidence with very low risk. Now, is this a cure-all, a panacea? No, again, it works just for a percentage of patients. Are there predictors of which patients might get the best response? Nothing definitive yet, but interestingly, this leads us into our next topic. What are the theories of how this might help? Theory number one is a theory based off inflammation. To this day, inflammation remains one hot area of research in terms of how inflammation may play a role in perpetuating clinical depression. So, one of the theories and one of the potential predictors might be uh, patients who have higher rates of inflammation. Um, interestingly, in one of the studies that I quoted, uh, showed that in the cohort of patients who were responders in that study, they found that those responders uh, tended to have higher levels of CRP, or C-reactive protein, a nonspecific marker for inflammation. And interestingly, those who had higher levels of CRP seemed to get the best response from omega-3 fatty acids. Now, is that definitive? No, but an interesting observation that supports the theory that the anti-inflammatory properties of omega-3 fatty acids may have a potential role in how it helps alleviate depression. Um, theory number two, the actual cell membranes themselves. There is some theories that omega-3 fatty acids may alter membrane sensitivity to how it reacts to various neurotransmitters. It may also uh, alter and modulate how cell membranes interact with G proteins. So membrane interaction is another theory. And we can go on for hours about esoteric theories, but I wanna basically bridge the gap to practicality. Now, if one wanted to try to mimic uh, the positive studies that I just cited, how can one translate uh, what they did in those research studies to your own off-label treatment um, using omega-3s. So first off, it is actually important about the ratio of the different components of the omega-3 fatty acids. Most of these studies utilized at least a minimum of a two to one ratio or greater of EPA to DHA omega-3 fatty acid, or used a 100% EPA-based omega-3 fatty acid. So 
for those people who are critics of omega-3 fatty acids saying this must just all be placebo and expectation, interestingly, we haven't seen the same reproducible benefit over the years when utilizing a one-to-one -one ratio EPA to DHA or a DHA heavy uh, you know, ratio omega-3 fatty acid intervention. So if it were all just placebo, then why wouldn't all these different subtypes have the same degree of evidence, which they do not? So another interesting observation. So it is important to use a two to one ratio or greater of EPA to DHA or a 100% EPA based uh, omega-3 fatty acid. Now in terms of dosing, these studies recommend starting at 1000 milligrams a day, trying that out for three to four weeks to see if it's tolerable, to see if you get a good response. But more recent meta-analyses suggest that doses of 2000 milligrams a day to 3000 milligrams a day may actually give you an increased probability of getting a good response. So, and trying that for about three to four weeks before determining if you, should, if you want to continue or not, okay? Now, what are the side effects? Because everything you ingest obviously has side effects. Side effects include things like uh, excessive belching or burping, some dyspepsia or just stomach upset. Uh, you might notice a fishy odor or fishy taste. I know that sounds kind of gross. Uh, higher doses may put you at increased risk of nausea. Um, pretty high doses, so like 4,000 milligrams a day or higher may actually put you at risk for prolonged bleeding potentially. And so a consideration if you already have some kind of clotting disorder, prolonged bleeding issue, you're on blood thinners, you have a major surgery coming up, to take that into consideration and talk with your prescriber about, okay? But again, uh, 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams a day of two to one ratio or greater of EPA to DHA or a 100% EPA-based omega-3 fatty acid. Again, modest evidence from numerous clinical studies. In my opinion, probably better evidence than some of the recent FDA-approved uh, medications out there, which is crazy to say. And uh, rather low risk in terms of risk profile. So again, underappreciated, underutilized. Is it gonna work for everyone? No. But will it work for some people? Possibly, okay? Um, finally, do I need to spend a boatload of money buying some kind of super purified, super refined, super potent, proprietary, uh, from my doctor, my doctor's office, proprietary blend omega-3 fatty acid that costs $200 a month? No, absolutely not. Do not do that. Do not get vultured upon. Do not get preyed upon. Most of these clinical studies themselves, the ones that even had these positive findings, were using $8 to $20 a month omega-3 fatty acids, the kinds that you can buy from well-known, reputable national brands out there and purchase from your grocery, your local pharmacy. They weren't using anything special. They were literally using um, just off-the-shelf omega-3s from reputable brands out there that cost about $8 to $20 a month so that if these studies were ever tried to be reproduced, that this could be generalizable, things that are accessible to the general public. So that's the good news. So I hope you found this video interesting. I'm not sure why the original one was taken down, but hopefully this one was a couple minutes shorter, <laughs> made it more easily digestible. And if you like these types of videos, please like, please subscribe, and I will try to post other videos on non-prescription interventions that do have legitimate, reasonable evidence kind of like this intervention. Hope you like this. Dr. Kim, until next time, guys. Bye-bye.